There's something about a fast-paced, cosmopolitan city that truly inspires entrepreneurs. As part of Local Success Season 2, I will be introducing you to 12 very talented entrepreneurs. As we follow their journey, we discover what it took for them to get to where they are today. Dubai is often referred to as a melting pot of cultures, having over 200 different nationalities that are living and working here. With the recent announcement of Dubai winning the bid to host Expo 2020, the Emirate is set to receive over 20 million tourists who will be flying in from all corners of the globe. As most tourists, they'll be keen on trying traditional Arabian cuisine. As one of their options, there's mandi, a dish that is made up of rice, meat and a mixture of spices. Responsible for bringing the concept into our mall's food courts is Mr. Fayez Al Nusari, the managing director of quick service restaurant Mandelicious. The UAE is just such a perfect place to start a concept like this because um, you go to a food court like this and you'll find at least 20 different nationalities at a time. One eating with their hands, one eating only with a spoon, one eating with a fork and knife. That's and true. So, and it's perfect. <laughs> so we tested all of this in, in the uh, mall goers, the mall visitors in the UAE, and that made us believe we are more than ready to go anywhere in the world. What we've done is we've taken a very traditional cuisine that used to be done in, um, in the desert areas of the Arabian Peninsula and brought it to places that it has never been to before. Do you find that Mandelicious based within a food court, is this still very appealing and attractive for your locals? Good question, and I've been asked that a lot of times. In fact, when in the beginning when we started with Mandelicious, there was a little bit of a resistance to the idea and the concept because people are used to, when they eat Mandi, they sit on the floor and they go to very traditional restaurants in traditional areas. In our case, uh, these people have come to a complete different setting. Now they're in a food court where they used to eat completely different types of cuisines. But the acceptance took a little bit of time, but it was very good. I'm sure you encourage them to eat with their hands as well. Oh yes, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, all the people that visit Mendelicious, wherever they are from, um, they have always tried to eat with their hands and succeeded. And speaking of food courts, or let's say rather the UAE's food and beverage industry, we are very spoiled for choice as a consumer when it comes to restaurant choices and different cuisine. How competitive has this industry become? Very competitive, I would say extremely competitive. There's, uh, there's new concepts, there's new ideas born in the UAE, plus a lot of new franchises brought from everywhere in the world. And the food and beverage industry is an attractive and very profitable one. Now we are living that success. We are going from opening just one outlet, the one that we have right here, to opening four. We have four operational outlets in the UAE now. We will have nine operational outlets in the UAE before February next year. You've come from a background of travel and tourism. Now you're in food and beverage. I'm always very interested how entrepreneurs adapt to different industries and how they make a success from a concept such as Mandelicious. I always try to understand what is the one thing, the one common thing, uh, or the common de denominator in things that would allow you to approach as many people from as many nationalities as possible. And this has helped me a lot when I was setting up Mandelicious because I needed to take this Bedouin, uh, desert-born, uh, very traditional cuisine out of its shell mm -hmm. and um, present it in a new way for you and everybody around to look at and think, I could have this, I could eat this. In fact, I, th I could understand this. One of the most difficult things that we faced in Mandelicious was the awareness uh, of people. Because once we tapped into the food court, we were talking to completely different consumers than the ones that normally go to Mendi restaurants. And now you had those people who needed to understand, what is this food? You're saying cuisine of Arabia. What is Arabia? Which part of Arabia? And then you needed to break it down to people. And this is probably where the whole tour guiding thing came into play and uh, allowed me to do so.